My name is Madam Alcoholic. We're going to open this meeting up with a moment of silence. If you ain't never been here before, it's going to be a little bit longer than a second just to hopefully you know, clear our brains and hopefully have a new experience with this step tonight. Marshall's going to take us out when he's ready. Truly grateful to be part of this. Y'all helped me more than I probably help y'all. Uh, <clears throat> last week we talked about resentments and when a part of writing an inventory. This week we'll be talking about fears of sex to finish up our step four and engage us next week about step five. And that's where we lose a lot of people. Uh, we start talking about the fifth step, and you don't know how we're gonna talk about the fifth step for an hour, and it's pretty fucking easy. Uh, the principle, anyway. You just talk about the principle. So anyway, make a long story short, we believe in sponsorship. If you're not really sure, you're in between sponsors. We just have somebody that you could kind of get to know out there. Uh, if you kind of don't relate to them, uh, talk to me after the meeting. I, I point you to somebody else. Uh, it's very important that you want what your sponsor has. If not, you're not going to do what he does. Uh, if you just want to go to one meeting a week and have sex with everybody in the three quarter house, then that's what you're going to get. So it's very important. You want what he has, but not willing to do what he wants you to do. Because uh, you always look at, you always like, like, picture this. If that guy is smoking dope and stuck in Texas, or that guy comes in and gets sober, and I'm like agreeing with him, then that's kind of weird, ain't it? Because evidently, he's still insane. Evidently, he's still thinking a job and a relationship is still going to fix him. You know, hopefully that the new man is shouting out that he has an answer that really works. The ex-problem drinker, who is armed with facts about himself, can generally win the confidence with another alcoholic with a few hours. Until such an reach reaches a little nothing can be accomplished. Very important. You know? So, is there any men who need a sponsor? Come to the forward. Come to the front. Need the weapon. Make sure he's being honest out there. <laughs> Women. Okay, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna talk a little bit about step one. That's gonna move us right into step <clears throat> four, which is on page twenty-five. Go to twenty, the bottom of twenty-four. See that? Go a paragraph above that one. Second paragraph, all the way at the bottom. The alcoholic may say to himself in the most casual way, it won't burn me this time, so here's how. Or perhaps he doesn't think at all. How often have some of us begun to drink in this nonchalant way, and after the third or fourth, pounded on the bar and said to ourselves, for God's sake, how did I ever get started again? Only to have that thought supplanted by, well, I'll stop with the sixth drink, or what's the use anyhow? So, you know... I, 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 out of my experience of being around Alcoholics Anonymous, I say around because I never really completed all 12 steps. I maybe worked on with a sponsor, but I didn't do what the fuck they told me to do. I just kind of, I kind of like did like a little fourth to fifth step in the treatment center and felt better and got a sponsor and did another fourth to fifth step with him and just hung around and got bored. <sighs> never really made no amends unless it was going to benefit me. And, uh, you know, I would start using like Mojo. You know, or I would start drinking. <laughs> or I'll start smoking pot. And then I get caught mouth, then I get a beer, you know. And then once I get the beer, then I need some dope to help me drive. And then I ask myself, why did this fucking happen again? <laughs> you know? Like how did this all es you know, and that's the crazy thing. I will start off, you know, eh, I smoke the joint, and then I'm like, oh my god, I don't like the way it makes me feel. When and then I wake up, I'm like, I'm gonna go to AA and tell me, I'm gonna tell my sponsor and this and that. But by then, I'm still using dope every day, and that means pot and drinking. I'm like, you know what? It's not. I'm just, 
I'm just smoking a few joints, drinking a six pack. Sometimes I might drink a 12, you know? <laughs> but it ain't bad, you know? I'm like, you know, th these people, you know, can always look at this like well known spree as means like, as soon as I dumped it in, I need to be at the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> here's my fucking keys in my car, come back with the package. You know, <laughs> some people that, that happens to, and some people it don't, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, uh, I, I wasn't that tight. My sister was, okay, so, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but I, even once I was dumping in, I said, why I stop? See, that mental twist and that physical factor is already talking to me. The way I look at a physical allergy is, I me. Mean, I have to have that chemical every day for me to think I'm normal. I'm not saying you have to do a gram, a half a gram, an eight ball, three lower taps. Oh, you ate five, you're a fucking drunk. No. What I'm saying is, how much of that chemical you dump in your body? Because there was days that I might dump a gram in, and there was days I will dump a 0 0.8 and flush it down the toilet and swear to God I want to do it again. See, I was trying to get to a certain point, and then when I got to that point, I didn't want to be at that point no more. That's fucked up. And or if you get some bad dope, it's even more, more worse, because you like... You ain't even, you at no point, you feel played, <laughs> you know? Because you're trying to get to this point, and then once you get to that point, you don't want to be at that point, and you want, you're done. Let's get rid of it. Let's get sober. And you wake up, if you like me, I'll buy it all again. So, keep reading. But this sort of thinking is fully established in an individual with alcoholic tendencies. So, when this sort of thinking has happened to me, with alcoholic tendencies, what would happen? What, what, what happened to me? What, why, is, why was I thinking this way, Austin? He has probably placed himself beyond human aid. I probably placed myself beyond human aid. I was going to meetings, shopping for women. I thought a relationship was going to get me sober. I figured I'd just work a lot. I signed up for the outpatient program. I was going to all these damn house meetings and educations, and you was teaching me things. Keep reading. And unless locked up may die or go permanently insane, these stark and ugly facts have confirmed by legions of alcoholics throughout history. But for the grace of God, there would have been thousands more convincing demonstrations. So many want to stop but cannot. That's the thing. So many want to stop but can't. I mean, if you're anything like me, I would want to go to detox every night. But by morning, I wasn't going. I wanted the pain to stop, but I couldn't stop. I don't know if that makes sense, you know? Like, you are caught in that cycle, and you know it's like you, you, you don't like what you're doing, and you want it to stop, but you have no choice but to keep going. You know, and, and that's, that, that's, that's like a... So, dealing with a drunk that's still using, I say this, guys, for, for a reason, it's hard to be like... That person don't want it. They should go to any lengths. They should pay and handle money. They should, who knows? Maybe she really wants it, but you're asking her to go to D times and she don't want to go. But she's desperate as fuck. But she don't want to go right? because the shit is beating her to death. It reminds me of a story, and we got to keep going. It reminds me of a story of Clarence Snyder. He's the 42 member of Alcoholics Anonymous who got sober. And when he got sober, he called Dr. Bob, and Dr. Bob said, be at, be at Akron Hospital this many days. And what he did was he paying him money, enough to buy enough booze to keep him from detoxing, and the rest went to a bus ticket to get to town to town. And when he got to Akron, there was a big snow blizzard came through and shut down all the bus stations, so he had to walk. And when he bust through the doors of Akron Hospital, the mental hospital, he busted through the doors. He said, I'm here to see a doctor that said he could fix me. I'm a drunk. And they, and they called Dr. Bob, and he got him in there. And the clothes, they had to thaw him out. The clothes were stuck to his skin. He refused any detox medicine, any alcohol and about died in that hospital. He said, I came here to quit drinking. You ain't giving me no more. See, that's what happened to me a lot of times. I would go to the mental hospitals for eating a lot of Xanaxes and other chemicals, and you are weaning me off of these chemicals with other chemicals, which is low milligrams of Xanaxes or volume, 
And by the time I got out of them detox centers, I was still craving. I might stay sober a week, maybe three days, maybe four days, or maybe not even that day. I had had times I'd leave Baton Rouge Detox and get a daiquiri. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just going to drink, you know? So, there's a solution. There is a solution. Almost none of us like the self-searching, the leveling of our pride, the confession of shortcomings with the process required for successful confirmation. Almost none of us like step four, step five, and confess it to another person, which is process which requires a success consummation. But keep reading. But we saw that it really worked in others. And step two, we have come to believe that this man has an answer that really works. Keep reading. And we had come to believe in the hopeless. We have come to believe that the hopeless, that the obsession is going to return, and I'm not going to be able to turn this fucking brain off. Keep reading. And futility of that I'm going to dump it in. I can't stop. And by the fact, I cannot face life successfully because my head runs without these spiritual principles. Keep reading. When, therefore, we were approved by those in whom the problem had been solved. They wasn't just still saying one day at a time, keep coming back. I'm still recovering, you know. <laughs> Just stick around. Wait for the miracle. Wait for a needle to hit you in the damn arm. You better tighten up. You better be figuring out who the hell you're following, what you come to believe in. That's, a, that's like the whole grind in here. Like looking at Clarence Snyder took people through the steps in two days. Dr. Bob took people through the steps in eight hours. You can't remember the suffering humiliation from even a month, a week ago. You left detox or left Woodlake 28 days ago. What the fuck are you doing? See, them guys in the first 100 knew that you only had a window of opportunity to accept, accept this. Before the wife, just like Jim, the wife came back. He started working for the job. He once lost through drinking. All time went well for a while. Three months. Everything's great. I'm sober. Boom. He kept drinking. They work went on each occasion, carefully reviewing everything that happened to him drinking an ounce of whiskey with his milk. You know, keep reading. There was nothing left for us but to pick up the simple kit of spiritual tools laid at our feet. Nothing. Nothing. It, 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 that's one of my favorite little things I like to do when I meet with a guy. It's like, do you have any other ideas? <laughs> Let me know now, bro. Like, this shit don't work. Like, when you're out of any option, you done try to get sober every damn way. And matter of fact, your head is running uncontrollably. Especially if you're not taking no damn sleep medicine and, and treating all this, trying to treat this internal shit that's going on in your brain. When you have nothing else, that you know that nothing's going to make you happy in your world. And then knowing that you can get sober and everything will be grateful time after time. Maybe three, maybe six months, but the obsession's going to return. And how did the world grab me and distract me from what I was supposed to be doing? And lose and have no more willingness. There was nothing left for me to pick up the kit of spiritual tools and lay it at my feet. I found much that had been rocking into a fourth dimension, which I not even dreamed. The great fact is this. We have deep down affected spiritual experience that resolutely turn our whole attitude towards our what? Austin, you with me? Towards our fellows and Good towards job. God's universe. Towards our fellows, towards other people. Hey, look back at last week. We hated everybody. So we're starting to have a change. Towards God. Where is God? Hell, I've been praying my whole life and he wasn't there. You know? So now I'm starting to have a change of thinking in this. It wasn't God lost, it was me. He was there, but he was deep. Keep reading. The central fact of our lives today is the absolute certainty that our Creator has certain, entered, into certain our entered into our hearts and, and what? Lives, lives by our actions in a way. Which is indeed miraculous. <laughs> what an awesome gift. That's just cool shit, you know? That he's entered our hearts and lives in a way which is like a miracle. That we get to do shit we don't even supposed to be doing right now. Keep reading. He has commenced to accomplish those things for us which we could never do by ourselves. If you are seriously alcoholic as we were... Question. If. We if, if. 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 Don't mean that you are. Only you could diagnose yourself. Classifications page 20. Is, I don't give a fuck. You don't love your family and you're incapable of showing that. It don't matter. If you are an alcoholic, if you are sitting here sober and you're lacking in your program and your head can't stay focused for one fucking hour, you're an alcoholic. Welcome. <laughs> if you think about all kind of shit you're supposed to do tomorrow before you go to bed, you may be an alcoholic. <laughs> A normal person might think about it, but it don't dominate them. 
<laughs> and they also don't want to direct everybody in their life. They might control some people, but they don't want to direct everybody. I mean, we'll, we'll start running a restaurant or waiting tables and think we could manage the whole damn restaurant within a week. <laughs> Build cases on everybody in the house, including the people at work. <laughs> you know, keep going. We believe there is no middle of the road solution. We were in a position where life was becoming impossible. I, my personal opinion, I think everybody has to go through this if you want to get sober. That is my personal opinion. I'm not right. You know, uh, that, like I said, it's my opinion. But I think everybody has to be put in a position where your life is becoming impossible. If your life is impossible, then you might be making the decision to turn your life over to God. If it's in fucking possible. But if your life is hashtag sober this and fucking great, then why the hell are you turning it over? <laughs> think about it. Everything is great. Not a cloud in the horizon. Yeah? Think about it. I've been there. Slept with three different women, didn't even wash your shit in, in between. And everything's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm great. <laughs> yeah? Just keep coming back. Huh? Got it. I'm getting the hang of this shit. Yeah? <laughs> The good news about being brutally honest with people is that they have no room to bash you. If they do, they make themselves look like idiots. <laughs> people are like, oh, you know, that's a hoe. <sighs> okay, just go up there Monday. He'll tell you all about it. <laughs> that's the most stupid shit. <laughs> if you want to know what I've done, come ask me. I'll tell you. <sighs> what I got to fucking high? Hell, I'd have been through hell. <laughs> it wasn't like 10 years of life was fucking great. <laughs> It was 10 years of pain and mistakes and a lot of happiness and watching God change people's lives, too. <laughs> you know? So, we got to get out of this shit. You finish reading that. <laughs> Just finish reading it. Okay. Just finish reading it. And if we had passed into the region from which there is no return through human aid. If there was a region, that had... means that there was no return to human aid. That means no human being was going to get me sober, but I had to come to believe in the power greater than myself for me to believe that this process was going to work. Think about it, guys. You can believe in God, but did that restore you to your right mind? Somebody had to tell you about an allergy in the mental session, and maybe they think crazy like me, and maybe that they're taking care of their fucking kids and, and, and okay. Th this is what, you know, I, I looked at my sponsor when I got sober, four years sober, going to Buku service commitments, had a big book in his hand, and he was trying to help somebody, and I was like, that's, that's some badass shit right there. I mean, I could see a newcomer doing it. Hell, I done it a lot when I was in the beginning. But here he is, four years sober, shouting out that he had an answer that really worked. Then he talked about climbing up chimneys with butcher knives, taking off plates, thought everybody was out to get him, waking up his sister in the middle of the night, thinking she was the police, cocked back at her. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, she can, he can help me. You know, because I thought like that. <laughs> After I got sober, I still thought everybody was out to get me. I couldn't even have sex right without looking at a camera. You know, so like, you know, I was like, I was gone from reality when I got here, you know? Shoo, shoo. So keep reading. We had but two alternatives. One was to go on to the bitter end, blotting out the consciousness of our intolerable oh, situation no as best God. as we could, and the other to accept spiritual help. Yeah, you got to be quick. We got to plunge in this fear. <laughs> Where you at? 33, go, go 33. Young people. Yeah, most cases a powerful lesson. Right there, go, go, go. years found he was just where he had left off at 30. We have seen the truth demonstrated again and again. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Commission to drink after a period of sobriety during a short time as bad as ever. So, so here's the hope that I've been sober by the grace of God for many years. And I know what that shit's going to do me when I dump it in. I don't think that like, oh, well, you know, I've been sober a while. I got this. I was just smoking crack back then, you know? Man, I know when I done this shit in my body, what's going to happen? I ain't going to stop, man. 
And you know what? I'm probably going to die before I come in here and ask you for fucking help. Because everything I've seen and felt from the presence of God is sitting in the book and God revealing things to me in that book. All that's got to go out the fucking window. Before I come in here and say, hey, I fell and I need you to sponsor me. So I look at it like life and death. And before I go that far, I'll probably commit suicide before I drink. I have been there many times. In sobriety. So, there must be no lurking notion of something that someday would be immune to alcohol. And what that means is that not that you can say, hey, I, you need to make sure you can never drink again. Hell, <laughs> maybe a week. <laughs> I don't have a good record of that. What I'm saying that one day you have to know that you would never be able to safely use it. Do you believe that? Do you believe you have an abnormal reaction and you're in a progressive disease that gets worse or better? Only you can look at your past and, and, and differentiate that. Keep reading. Young people may be encouraged by this man's experience. You want my marker? You want my marker? Get it. Without any of them can do it because none will really want to stop and hardly any of them, what, hardly one of them because of the peculiar mental twist already acquired will find he can win out. Several of our crowds, men of 30 or less, have been drinking only a few years. The dishonest self is helpless as those who have been drinking 20 years. So it don't matter. Look, look, we're going to go to all. 67 out there. So that's the cool thing. I can't tell you why you might be 40 years old and I maybe got sober at 23. I can't tell you why you drank for 15 years before a malady occurred. Now listen, listen, God, a malady. Did you have some consequences from drinking? Yes. Maybe some of us was able to control it and take it or leave it alone. I used to eat a lot of ecstasy and acid. And, and I mean, I had a lot of good time eating a lot of ecstasy and, and eating a half a pill and chocolate wafer and just, just locking up and, and go to work Monday, you know, and just have, a, have an awesome time on the weekend. But at some point when I cross that thing and the malady has occurred, that means when I'm using, it doesn't work and I cannot deal with life no more. Because no matter what, when I dumped that chemical the first time in my body, for me, I felt like I could face life successfully. I felt I fit in. See, that's what's so important with an alcoholic to get a home group, to get around some people who might give a shit about you and don't care about throwing you underneath the bus or letting you sleep with all these women, but get around some people that really care what you could be a part of. Whether you're sober or whether you're drunk, you're still wanting to be a part of something. To feel some kind of fucking self-esteem, some kind of prestige, some kind of ambition. <sighs> Keep reading. All right, we're going to go down to the bottom. Notice the word fear is along Mr. Brown. Notice the word fear is bracketed alongside the difficulties with Mr. Brown, Mrs. Jones, the employer, and the wife. This short word somehow touches about every aspect of our lives. It touches every aspect of our life. Fear is directly in the middle of your inventory. Now, look, guys, when you, your very first inventory, look, I, I got to say it because I don't want you to get confused. I don't want you to feel like, man, I didn't, I, I, I didn't understand all that in my fourth and fifth step. Look, look, man, you got to think, I done did a lot of inventories. I done looked at a lot of shit about myself. I done been in a lot of pain. As you keep working these inventory, as you keep getting some bad results, you're going to grow. You know, at first it's just like, oh, you know, fear of drowning, fear of this, fear. But this is the root. I'm fear of this guy's going to take my job. I'm fear that this person's going to kick me out. I'm fear that this girl is going to tell my mistress so I continue to be nice to her. Check it out. And I use these things to, 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 to protect my instincts because I'm in fear. But I did I not set the ball off wrong myself. Keep reading. It was an evil and corroding thread. The fabric of our existence was shot through with it. It set in motion trains of circumstances which brought us misfortune we felt we didn't deserve. One girl messes me over, I'm never going to trust them again. One guy messes me over, I'm never going to have friends again. They do nothing but trend. One dude sets me up with the police, hey, friends ain't going to do nothing but hurt you. Now look, set evil circumstances in motion we felt we did not deserve. But do we not still use ourselves and use our other thing to make ourselves feel good? How we run and feel and build walls against other people and keep them out of our lives. Or build cases on them out of resentments. Keep reading. 
Phillips said the ball rolling. Maybe. Ha, ha, Sometimes ha, we ha. think we are off the class with stealing. It seems to cause more trouble. We reviewed our fears thoroughly. All right. In, in, in recovery dynamics, I'm not a, I'm not a counselor, guys. Last week, we did, we did resentments. I love recovery down minutes with, with, with resentments. I love the sheets. A lot of guys I sponsored, I've been through the steps 8,500 million times, and I give them a goddamn clipboard or say, get some papers. Figure it out. Write the shit down. As uh, long as you can read it, because I can't, we're going to be in good shape. So, now, sheets is really good for me because I, 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 I write all, and Tevin knows, my whack ass, Tevin's a master at writing his inventory. They're so beautiful. And everything's classified, and it's over here, and it's over there. My shit just like, like somebody threw up. There it is. Five word, motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm sick. What up? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, but the, the sheets was very important for me because I could focus on just writing, the, writing what I'm fearful of. Now, in recovery dynamics, they're gonna have all them instincts. I'm in fear of this, and then they fake my instinct. I don't like that. That's my personal opinion. I'm here to tell you as a member of AA, what we're about to do is gonna be strictly out the book, and that makes a lot more sense for me. And when I do my guys' inventories, all of them know, we do it straight out the book. I don't care if you wrote that out on that paper, that's fine. I'm about to take you through the fear, why you have it. Look, let's look at self-reliance, period. There's nothing else to talk about. If you want to still hang on to that shit and self-reliant, c- continue to get some more pain. Keep reading. We reviewed our fears thoroughly. We put them on paper, even though we had no resentment and connection with them. We asked ourselves why we had them. So the first column, we reviewed our fear. I'm fear of being alone, fear of getting hurt, I fear I ain't going to get a job, I fear I ain't going to buy my family Shit for Christmas because I ain't got a job. I'm just getting sober. I look at this. Why do I have this? Because I never was there. I've been being a piece of crap person my whole life. Or because I'm just getting sober and do 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 do. Now where does self reliance fail me? Think about it. Where does self reliance fail me? How much of this shit is dominating my day? That's when I'm in self reliance. When I'm trying to manage that, that's where that spiritual malady comes out to fear and self reliance. That's why fear is always right back to self reliance. Now, I could take all them fear and run and work my ass off and, fix, uh, and try to fix all that, and I'm still in self reliance because now I feel like I'm fixing it. Keep reading. <laughs> Wasn't it because self reliance failed us? Self reliance was as good as far as it went, but it didn't go far enough. Some of us once had great self confidence. See, it's self confidence. That's when I make all that money, and I'm like, oh, yeah, look, look, I worked and I paid this, I paid that, I paid that. I'm, I'm all in self aligned And then, if you get $2,000 saved, $1,000 saved, $500, whatever it is, you had to spend it because something broke on your car, whatever the case is. I, I don't know. Yeah, circumstances worn. It goes all over. Then, once you spend that shit, if you're trying to get it back in there, you're right back to self reliance. I'm in fear. I just spent some of my money. My air conditioning broke. Boo, 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 boo. See, the solution, I have, to, I have to get the solution before we get to this paragraph because I, this is what I deal with. This is, you know, my shit is not like, at one point I had Buku charges, I had a lot of other shit. But today my shit is like over here with like, hey, you got five or $6,000 saved, but you had to spend $1,000 on your AC. But you keep in mind that God has given you a job and all of a sudden you made some extra money and you're like, I just, I just, I just got to tell my fiance, I said, bro, we made this much money in the last two weeks. What's about to break? because <laughs> it's not my money see God has opened up doors for me to take care of my family see when I get selfish I want to hold that shit hostage and I want to protect my emotional securities and this is everything I do and then I want to get resentful at people when they don't do what the fuck I want them to do because I'm taking care of them this is like forms of shit that I go to you might not relate to you where you're at in sober living I don't know but I have to share a little bit more of my experience where I'm at. Keep reading. But it didn't fully solve the fear problem or any other. When it made us cocky, it was worse. Now, ego-driven person is full of fear. Don't, you know, I look, you, you're going to tell me, no, man, I'm trying to God. No, you're full of fear. You sleep with five different women and nothing's wrong. You're full of fucking fear. Because that girl, you're still using her out of fear to fear. To, to, you're in fear that your emotional security is not met. You're running self-reliance to fulfill it because your security is, is material and emotional security. Means friends, means family, means, means, means my companion. 
And when them instincts dominate me, then they rule upon my life and I'm in fear that God is not going to meet them. So I start using these people to fulfill them. And then I get resentful or I push them away when they get too close. This is how I operate. I don't know about anybody else. Like I'm a hardcore psychopath. So, you know, so, you know, but that's what. Keep reading. So the first column, you know, any kind of fear inventory you do in your life, including me, that's what I do. I look at the first paragraph. The paragraph that's going to get me to a different, look, I cannot fix this shit. Me trying to figure it out is ruining my motherfucking day, okay? Whether I lost this money, whether this happened, whether my, my girlfriend ain't treating me right, and I'm in a lot of fear that that ain't going to work out, so I might as well do what I want to do to protect my emotional securities, whatever the case is. You know, so, you know, I, I have to see where this ain't working out and it's consuming all my thoughts of living in this fear. So the next paragraph prepares us to get on a different basis. You are not going to get on a different basis unless you see that self-reliance that failed us. Okay, guys? Some of these things become ugly. I say that because they're not disgusting. First, they become ugly. When they become ugly, they're like, ugh, this shit ain't really too cool. My hair's running. When they get disgusting, it's like, I just want to fucking get rid of this. You know, or somebody else calls you with the same shit. And you're like, ugh, ugh, fucking shit, you know? <laughs> That's when, it's, that's when it's getting to a basis where you're about to say, bro, I don't know how to get rid of this guy, and how can I cram this schedule to shield me? Key reader. We are on a different basis. The basis of trusting God and relying upon God. Relying is an action. Key reader. We trust infinite God rather than finite. That's a really hard deal here. We only trust God so much. There's so much that we actually see. You know? I always feel like I'm still agnostic. There's only so much I can trust God, only so much that I think I am actually trusting God with. Some of this shit I'm still hanging on to, and I don't even see I'm hanging on to it. And that's like up to God and another person. And God will put that person, which will be a sponsee, in my life or all that calamity for me to find that serenity. Keep reading. We are in the world to play the role he assigns. Just to the extent that we do as we think he would have us and humbly rely on him, does he enable us to match calamity with serenity? We never apologize to anyone for depending upon our creator. We can laugh at those who think spirituality is a way of weakness. Paradoxically, it is the way of strength. The verdict of the ages is that faith means courage. Faith, faith, faith means courage. Just having faith isn't good enough, but it takes courage to walk through the fear. Now, if you look at a life before you got sober, how much courage you actually had? <laughs> None. Hell, you've been doing everything you want to do. Well, yeah, I trust God only when I'm in the fucking bind. Then I slap him in the face. <laughs> so courage comes from results. When, like... You just ain't got no money to buy your family Christmas and you're working seven days a week and every time you go to court, they offer you 10 years of running together with your parole. But you know the happiest you are sitting down getting in the book with that dude. You're five years sober and all these things are coming together in your life and you go to jail for forcible rape and you didn't even fucking do it. And they throw a hold on you and you have to fight the fucking charges and pay $10,000 to a lawyer and ruin all your fucking financial means and sell everything you own once again. See, without that courage of knowing, like, it wasn't courage like, oh, well, I could conquer this. It was courage like, okay, I'm scared to, to death, and who the fuck can I help? Period. And that's what the fear, that's what the, like, the, the principle is going to tell you. So you read a principle, read the fear. We ask God in the resentment part, we ask God to help us show which is the action. If you want to know how the program works, it's in how it fucking works. Sorry. If you're trying to figure out step 10 and you don't know where these principles is, then you're fucking lost. Like when the guy pisses you off at the house or the girl don't text you no more and you see her with somebody else at a fucking meeting, there's your resentment prayer. There goes your, 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 in, your, your, your instincts and, and also some of the ideas. And maybe you could recap your evaluation of how it went, really went down. 
You know, it sucks. You know, so keep reading. All men of faith have courage. They trust their God. They never what? Apologize for God. You know, uh, Tevin always says, you know, uh, I always ask him, I say, you think I was too hard on them people? You think I said this and made piss too many people off? He said, if you think that it came from God and then you went and you prayed and it came through. See, this, this, this is the thing. Like, I really don't give a fuck that much. I, I do know I'm kind of hardcore and I can't be an asshole that I don't mean to be. So I question some of my shit sometimes today just to be more considerate. But if you're doing what you think God wants you to do and you disturb the fuck out of him, why are you questioning, man? See, if you care about what people think about you, you're going to have a real hard time in sponsorship. This is not for what people think about us. Like, this is how, this is how you hook a motherfucker. You come as you are. And with your psycho head, three, four, five years, ten years sober, and you tell them how fucked up you are, and do you want help? <laughs> and you know what they're going to do? That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so just think about it. All right, now I'm going to come to the same guy. You got an allergy and mental session? What kind of insurance you got? You got high jeans, motherfucker? I got you. You know that? What you talking about here, man? This is what I used to do. I couldn't stop, and I, I still can't sleep at night sometimes when I get in these, 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 these holes. I call them holes, drowning holes. You know? And my head run all day. And, and not many good thoughts. <laughs> some of them good sometimes, some of them not. Depends on the weather and the times. <laughs> you know? So the cool thing is, this ain't built, I understand people have that. But if you go through, if you're trying to help people, you learn in time that you're going to get enough prestige and self-esteem about yourself that that's, you'd be surprised. Like, you'd be surprised how many people just come to me want to do sex inventories and stuff. And that's one of the weakest items in my inventory. But that's the most weakest thing, the, the weakest item I am, people want to talk to me about. They feel comfortable. They feel like I understand. You know, and then you go to jail for forcible rape and everybody bash you in AA and just fucking just throw you around. And then it's just question, what did you do all this for? Why did you come up here? You come up here to try to help somebody and, and if they got help, it's God's business. Are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you doing what you, what you want to do to use these people to fulfill your instincts? Are you running 18 houses to fill your instincts to let you know everybody what you're doing? Are you becoming a counselor or a treatment center just to try to carry a fucking message? Helping drunks is free. Sorry, alcohol and I may ask for a donation. That's about it. It don't cost nothing to find God. It might cost a lot of time and sacrifice, but uh, God ain't trying to ask you whether you have Blue Cross or Medicaid. <laughs> he don't give a fuck whether you did a chore that morning. He just wants you to spend a few, time, few, few hours with him and try to love somebody throughout the day. That's pretty much it. And that's the hardest thing for us to do. You know, keep reading. Instead, we let him demonstrate through Here's us. Here's the fear prayer. Instead, we let him demonstrate through us of what he can do. Instead, 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 let him demonstrate. It, it's an action. I love it. It's so beautiful. When I get in all this fear, it's like, look, I'm in fear about paying this bill. I'm in fear about saving this much money because it's never enough money. And I'm like, look, I can't fix that shit. Instead, I let him demonstrate through me what he can do today. Who can I help today? Who am I meeting today? Who I need to be praying about today? Oh, yeah, by the way, this new guy. Let me just focus on what does God want me to think about today. Keep reading. Watch, because everybody tell us what. We ask him to remove our fear and direct our attention to what would he have us be. What would God have me be? You want to know why I memorized all that shit? I've read that shit over and over. Still read it over and over and over. Because I'm asking God, what would you have me be right now, today, at this fucking moment? I don't even the future. Like, people used to always, I used to sponsor a lot of people in them houses. They're like, man, are you, I'm in this fear. They're going to kick me out of this house. Motherfucker, there's 120 of them. Trust God, clean house. Sorry. You know what I need to place? It don't matter. There's 120 of them motherfuckers. They'd be happy to take you. You know, trust God and clean house. If you do, you put in applications, you're doing what God wants you to do. You mean a sponsor, you know what's going to happen? God's going to take care of you. He always does. My problem is I got to get the fuck out the way for a minute. I got to get my dumb ass out the way and I got to, I got to, I got to get out there and put on these goddamn shoes and I got to go do something with them. You know, I can't just be like, all right, God, remove my fear and just sit there all day. Shit don't work like that. I can't be like, all right, God, remove my fear and just work 100 hours to try to make all this money. Now, work them hours. 
I'll stay up late. I'm going to try to help somebody. I need to answer that goddamn phone to get out of that shit, to get back to sanity, to get back to truth, to knowing that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And maybe it was for somebody else anyway. That's how it always is. Keep reading. At once we commenced our growth fear. Now about sex. Many of us need to overhaul in there. Yeah, we try to be sensible on this question. It's so easy to get way off track. We've Here we find human opinions running through extremes. Absurd extremes, perhaps. One set of voices cry that sex is the lust of our lower nature, a base of sense of procreation. Then we have the voices who cry for sex and more sex, who bewail the institution of marriage. We think that most of the troubles of the race are traceable to sex causes. They think they do not have enough of it or that it isn't the right kind. They see its significance everywhere. One school would allow man no flavor for his fare, and the other would have us all on a straight pe pepper diet. We want to stay out of this controversy. We want to stay out of this controversy. We do not want to be the arbiter of anyone's sex conduct. We alcoholics like to control people. This is not a controlled program. Everybody has different beliefs. Everybody comes from different things. Some people come from, my dad was married three different times. My house was filled up with strippers. That's what I grew up in. Banditos in the yard, all this other shit. Brothers messing with buku girls driving a lowrider. I was eight years old going through windows with them, maybe two or three different girls a night. Like, this is what I grew up into. So, you know, everybody's different. Some people have parents that was married all, uh, you know, their whole life. Some people want relationships. Some people like me, like, think that that's just impossible. What? Stay together that long? Just temporarily? Even if I'm trusting God, it's still temporarily. We don't know how long God put that person in my life. So I'm not trying to sit here and say that I want to control or organize your sex, sex relationships. My, my job is just to point out where you was at fault and what you should have done instead and get you to look at some of this shit in the middle. <laughs> That's it. So this inventory process is wrote exactly out the book as we're about to read. This is very, very important coming from a person like me who done a lot of different inventories of Joe McHugh and not, I didn't get no relief until I started seeing where the fuck was I at fault and what I should have done instead, okay? God damn it, you can't tell me, keep telling me, you want to mention your mom and your sister that way. What the fuck is that, bro? I got to start looking at, like, where did I... I always thought, <laughs> for years, I thought the women I was getting with was sick. <laughs> And they was probably somewhat sick, but they got, became way more sicker after dating me. <laughs> I created it. Oh, yeah. You know? You know? And then we set standards so high. We need to find this perfect person. Well, who are you going to marry? Jesus? Some people, you know, you date some people. Or you maybe slept with some people, we'll say that. And then you just, there's nothing there, right? And then God put these people in your life that you just love and you're died for. And you go all the way to darkness or all the way to the sky with them. And then that lasts for maybe two or three years, maybe five, maybe eight. And then all of a sudden, you just don't love each other no more. Why the fuck does that happen? I believe we're not in charge of love. I believe I cannot be like, okay, today I'm going to love this girl. Or today I'm going to love Kobe with all my heart, soul, and man. I'm going to do whatever I can to help him. I'm not in charge of them feelings. God is. I don't get to pick and, who, I don't get to pick and choose who I get to love either. You know, I might hate this guy, but I become to love him because he's just like me. <laughs> and that's very, very important with dealing with sex. Se you know, writing a sex inventory. Keep reading. We got plunge. We all have sex problems. We'd rather be human if we did. So if I tell you to stay in, don't get in a relationship for a year, we all have sex problems. I don't care if you can be faithful. You still have sex problems. I don't care if you know how to be in a relationship. You still have sex problems. Every one of us have this. After three or four months, what do we do? We get comfortable and we take the person for granted. That's a give or take with most humans. Keep reading. So who, who did I hurt? Where was I? Selfish, dishonest, inconsiderate. Keep reading. Did we unjustifiably arouse? Did I justifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, betterness? Sometimes by arousing that shit makes me feel like that woman loves me. 
know some people, maybe not women going to understand that, but <laughs> it's a sick thing. And do I do it on purpose? No. But in my delusion mind, that makes you come out because most women like, uh, some women like control. So they're always attached to people that they want to control, as I found. And the goal is to control them. But once you achieve the control or make them be faithful or make them spend a lot of time with you, then you cut off the ties and distraction. So the question is always like, how do we keep this shit alive here without playing games? <laughs> what the fuck is games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, as I look, where did I arouse this jealousy, suspicion, or betterness, or, or admitting these things, or saying some inappropriate stuff in front of my spouse? Keep, keep reading. Where was I at fault? What should we have done instead? So what I should have done instead? That's going to come up with my ideals. There's one fear prayer, there's one resentment prayer, and there's three sex prayers. Keep reading. So, shape a sane, sane is some kind of truth, a little bit, <laughs> ideal. It's going to change. Do you just have a little beginning? It's a bump. See, how many of us, like me, I didn't ever review my sex conduct. I would go from you to you to you, then you, oh, I really like you, and you hang out for a while, and then you just get tired of my shit. Now you, you, you. <laughs> and before you got tired of my shit, I already had somebody else on the back burner. I would continue to let you pick me up until I know that this one's fulfilling, going to meet the goal. And then I was the type of guy that had this one girl that jokes to me, this one was buck wild, this one was this way, this one. And I always had these in my pocket, but I was always chasing something new. But anytime I was in the bind, I always go back to mama. I always had this like mama, you know, ever since I was a teenager. You know, so I, as my instincts was demolished through my resentments when my mama smoked crack most of my life and I was taught these things. See, I was taught these things from my brother and all these people and I required these ideas and beliefs in there. So I continue to live a certain way to fulfill these things. Now, did I see all this when I first got sober? No. I had a lot of pain and mistakes and wanting to get a thorn out your leg, you start seeking Desperately. But it had to become unpretty. I did a lot of stuff that people thought was sick or crazy, but seemed normal to me. See, that's what I always say. Like, yo, this person sleeps with all these women. And they'll be like, oh, they, they chase recovery. Fast. They chase women. Like, you can't, you, you, you can't put that on that man, bro. That man ain't never been alone his whole fucking life. You know? If you're like me, I've never been single. You know, even when I was using, I still had something. You know, I wasn't really focused on it, but I always had something to take care of me. You know, some people could stay single. So just because you could stay single, you should set them standards to everyone else? No, that, that's not right. That, that stuff is way beyond what they could see right now. God don't even want them to focus on that right now. God might want them to focus on something else. I don't know. I'm not God. I know that's how it works for me. You know, and then he'll give you this little bit of truth. And you'll want to fucking commit suicide about yourself. And it's like, oh, I do that? It's called growing. Keep reading. <laughs> we subjected each relation, relation to this test. Was it selfish or not? So is it selfish or not? Did you hit the prayer? We asked God to help mold our ideals. So we had the first sex prayer, we asked God to help mold our ideals. Mold means fucking clay. Like, I'm, whatever this is, I should have not cheated. I should have been honest. I should have been patient. I should have been forgiven. My stuff is I want a girl with mother instincts, but I don't know how to be a father. I'm completely selfish. I want to do what the fuck I want to do. I want to work. I don't mind taking care of you because that's what's taught to me from my dad is to take care of my family, but show no emotional security and no ties when I'm there. Just do what I want to do on my own free time. Does it make sense, guys? So, you know, I want this woman with honest, you know, be honest, faithful, nothing to hide, forgiven communication. I don't care if you sleep with other men, just tell me about it. And uh, this, is, this is my shit, okay? You cannot make fun of me and my shit, okay, guys? It might be abnormal to you, but it's normal to me, okay? So you could tell me all these things. I say that for a reason, guys. I ask God to help mold my ideas and help me live up to them. Today, I still fail to live up to this, you know? I want you to be, fa I want you to be honest, but I can't be honest with you. I want you to be faithful, but I can't be faithful to you. 
You know, I want you to have mother instincts and take care of all this shit, but I get resentful if I have to take y'all to go look at Christmas lights for an hour while you let Rudolph the Red Nose Rain on the fucking radio. <laughs> That's really torture. It was okay watching, watching Christmas lights, but the Christmas music sucks. I hate Christmas, so, <laughs> you know, so anyway. But, so as I look at these things and how I, where I was at fault and what I should have done instead, where I should be more considerate, more understanding, more patient, more forgiving, and how these people step on our ideals of what we believe and the way we was raised. So you want me to communicate? This, look, this is a big resentment for me. Uh, deals with my sex conduct. So you want me to communicate about the kids, step kids and stuff like this. And most women have these. Uh, things in their mind. Me, I, I'm learning these things. But today I could recognize where my resentments come from because of her communicating these things with me. So she communicates, wants me to back her, co-parent type shit. So I'm going to back her, but want me to have a say-so where she's not always the bad guy. But she still calls all the fucking shots. <laughs> and I'll piss. How could I not? You want me to communicate? Look, I don't care. You can call all the goddamn shots. Just don't fuck with me. Sleep with me. Take care of me. Take care of the fucking kids. Break me off every once in a while. I'm, look, I ain't trying to micromanage the kids and how much fucking food they eat. Fuck, go hungry. <laughs> You're going to eat. Your body requires it. You know? So, see, the different beliefs we have. That's most of her resentments because I don't back her. But most of my resentments come because you don't communicate. You're just set all the rules. But you want me to communicate with you. But it's still about what you think is best. I don't know if this is making sense, guy. This is like some long-term shit that I've actually, actually been in a relationship for over four years. It's like a record. <laughs> so I'm like learning a lot of different stuff of what makes me tick and what understands. So I can say that too. We're going against some things with her complaining about the food or complaining about different things. Me and Tevin done an inventory of all the women we've been with, and I could pull up the resentments from my ex-wife or why them things threaten these ideas, and why do I get resentful? Now, once I get resentful at my spouse, it's a dangerous grounds for me because I run in self. See, once I get resentful, then comes the fear, then comes the self-reliance because she's, my instincts are threatened, and I know how to fulfill these bitches temporarily. You know? And now here comes the overuse of porn, heads running, do 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 do, and I'm right back to fucking square one. So they're un uncovering, discouraging, looking at the resentments, looking at the ideals, writing, communicating, praying about this shit, and trying to get back to the main focus of my life is trying today. What I gotta do, pray for this meeting, put on my shoes, try to be a fucking father, try to be a husband. What the fuck is that? I don't know. So just show up and try to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. It's like some hardcore shit. Might be too much for it. It's getting deep. It's getting deep. But, uh, I mean, man, when you're, you're new, you just got sober, you're horny. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, I was a blessed that I, I didn't live in a three-quarter house. If I lived in a three-quarter house, I wouldn't be here today. You know, uh, because there is so much more distractions. I went to all men's meetings my first six months sober. I went to, like, one meeting that was with women. I did a lot of service work, man. It's just like I couldn't, my head was so messed up. I, it would have distracted me, you know? So my main focus was that, you know? So keep, keep reading. Let's try to finish up some of this. remembered always that our sex powers were God-given and therefore good. Neither to be used lightly or selfishly, nor to be despised or loathed. So we make all these sacrifices and all this patience and tolerance for all these drunks, but we can't make a sacrifice for our spouse. You know, it's not always about what we want to do is making the sacrifice. This is what sucks. Why are you laying in bed with that girl you're sleeping with or whatever? What kind of sacrifices are you going to make for her? It sucks. You know, and it's not always about this. Like, you cannot sit here and make all these sacrifices and try to give her everything she wants because she's going to just leave you. You know, she wants to fight. And it's the equal balance of what God really wants us to do. You know, where she's making a sacrifice and compromising, and you're making a sacrifice. So either our sex powers to be used lightly or selfishly or despise that alone. My mom uses it despite low. She ain't having none. My sister used to use hers lightly, 
I done switched lightly, and I think Monica's more on the selfish side now, or selfishly, or overusing it and getting whatever I want out of this person, whether watching a movie, sleeping with them, whatever your case is. I, I won't say it. this is not all about sex, guys, uh, much as I used to think it was, but it's all about, like, what can I get out of this time with this person? And never really taking a thought of being like, what do you want to do? What kind of movies you really like? <laughs> You know, and really showing true interest besides their breasts or their titties or whatever the case is, you know. Because it really sucks, you know. I mean, I've been there. You walk in a meeting and you just send five fucking dick pictures, you know. It's not a pretty sight, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, sit with this girl and you, know, you have all this guilt and you think everybody's talking about you. Of course you think they're talking about you. <laughs> they are. <laughs> You're a whore. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you know, and I understand it, you know. But I mean, you know, at some point, you know, by cleaning that up, by looking at how I set the ball off rolling. You know, and also keeping in mind, not saying don't date an AA, but this is where you're trying to live at, man. This is life and death for some people. Some people. Some people is just fucking a day count. Some people are just like they're homeless and they're hanging out at fucking the, the compound type shit. You know what I mean? But some of us, still today, this is a life and death Aaron. Yeah, you're beautiful. I understand you're beautiful. I understand I'm not too bad myself. But I came here to help this motherfucker. You know, if you end up <laughs> naked somewhere down the road, <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> right now, I'm here for a fucking reason. And I believe with them kind of thoughts and goals, we could go a lot of places, you know. And it did. It saved me a lot of, lot of mistakes. Like, you know, if you're having, having problem in a lot of these areas, you know, like my sponsor, I used to do a lot of sex inventory, so I, I was really I, I was messed up. And my sponsor was saying, you know, if you're having problems with alcohol and drugs, go, why would you go hang out in the click house? So, Matt, if you're having problems with women, why are you going to be like, yeah, I'll bring you home, Ashley? No. I learned that the hard way, you know? And, and, and you just be like, nah, some other women, they'll come over there, I really love what you got to say. Yeah, well, you just got to find some women that you trust, you know? I don't know what else to tell you. You know, and at some point when you have a spiritual awakening, yeah, they look pretty, as I say, guys, but you're going to really look at, like, what step are you on? I've done this with a few women that I dated in the program. I can count on one hand. What step are you on? Oh, I'm on step four. Holler back when you get through 12 steps. <laughs> you fucking distracting you from this shit. Because the fact is that you end up at the Red Roof Inn on fucking back pages on my motherfucking conscience. You know? And then you're going to throw me underneath the bus. And bash me all in one, you know, like, and no telling what else will come. Maybe you, I, may, I might sleep with you and you might say I'll rape you. Doesn't have, that ain't happened to me too. You know, you're dealing with a lot of crazy motherfuckers in Alcoholics Anonymous. Everybody's not here to try to get sober. Some people just pass it through. Some people take a step one. Some people just fucking homeless. Fucking house makes them go to fucking meetings. Like ridiculous, you know? So once we get down all these ideas and look at it, the last, the last thing we're going to say is that we asked God what we should do about the simple matter. We recap the third step prayer last, uh, next week. And that, that prayer is going to, that's, that's, that's one on that same page on page 70, uh, 69. And that one I use is when me and my spouse is getting in a lot of fights. Problems is occurring. So I'm asking God what I should do about the simple matter. The right answers come. And how I know out of my past experience of dating women for maybe two years and we're fighting every week. I'm starting reading that prayer. We start fighting more. And shit starts getting bad when she's throwing shit at me. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know I didn't set you up with that one. <laughs> you know? And then I had times with the woman I'm, woman I'm engaged to right now. Uh, we get in some arguments. Shit gets bad. I start, I, the first thing I do is read the fear prayer because I know what's coming to me more. I know the lust is coming. Shit's about to hit me with driving for. I know me. I, I write enough inventories. I know who the fuck I am. I know where I'm headed. I know that this emotional security is about to dominate me. And, and the much as I pray, it ain't going to stop. It's fucked up, bro. One day it will. And I'm getting better with God's help. One day. I just don't know when. But, but, but say this. Say this. What if God took everything ugly in you? How the fuck was you going to help him? <laughs> we got to say that in class, you know? So you just read them prayers, you know, and we're going to cap the third, the third sex prayer and tie that in next week. We have a moment of silence for all those who are still suffering out there, and those who may get to die and never experience the truth that God has given us. 
who has all knowledge and power? 